Uh, one of the questions that have been continuously been said in all these resolutions is the fact that apparently Sri Lanka who's doing all this nonsense. The LTT completely omitted. They are the terrorists. They are the pe uh, people who actually killed innocent uh, uh, civilians and Tamil people. And instead of that, uh, you know, any, any mention of them, they continuously hammer on Sri Lanka, the country that defended their borders, their territory, and tried to save the people who were taken up by these terrorists. Uh, how come this has been continuously happening and the world is not talking about it? It's only us trying to scream about it, but nobody seems to have any concern. Is it because of the fact that we are a small country and we don't have that kind of a, you know, a, a margin within the world? Or what exactly is going on in your point of view? No, uh, Mahesh, uh, I wanted to mention this earlier also. Now this last phase of the war, I, mm -hmm. I touched upon that. Uh, with your leave, just I will uh, yeah, of expand course. a little. Now, there were these 300,000 people hmm. who were removed by the LTT. So the government had a uh, uh, real horns of a dilemma. The, 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 the civilians were there in front. So they had to induce the civilians to leave. So they dropped leaflets and, and civilians gradually started leaving. Now, this evacuation process was done by the ICRC by the eyes, not by the army. Yeah. They went to the ICRC, ICRC engaged boats, ships, uh, and they were brought from the Mulativ area and dropped at Pulbude. Yeah. Now the Navy gave an escort to that. And I have personally seen the letter written by the ICRC to the commander of the then commander of the Navy, who is now Admiral of the Fleet, Vasanta Karnagoda, mm -hmm. where they have commended the Navy for the cooperation that was shown. ICRC. <laughs> now that's the UN, <laughs> that's the international body. Yeah. And it's an independent international body commended. Then when they were brought to Pulmine, a field hospital was established. The field hospital was not manned by Sri Lankan doctors, it was manned by Indian doctors. So all stories about this rape and torture and things there. And thereafter, when they went to Manic Farm also, it is the Indian doctors, ICRC, the Red WHO, Cross. that's the ICRC, the International Red Cross, yeah. and the Food and Agriculture Organization. They provided food. So it was done under international, it was done by international agencies. Government of Sri Lanka really played a supporting role in this. So, it, it is a humanitarian operation. That's why Sri Lanka is calling it humanitarian mm -hmm. operation. It was done under international supervision. Nowhere in the world, I think, they have done this kind of thing. Yeah. Where the, 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 uh, the group, army that, uh, and the government that uh, defeated the terrorists get to a side and say, now you handle this part of it. So, what are they talking about this? Uh, Violations of humanity. It is, it is so. Why can't they first find out? I think the government of Sri Lanka must insist. first find out from the ICRC. First find out from the World Health Organization. Only drugs that were provided, pharmaceuticals were provided by the World Health Organization was given to these people. First find out from the Food and Agriculture Organization. They provided food. And find out from the Indian government. They provided the medical staff. <laughs> so, so, this was something I am personally witness to this because I went and visited this as Chief Justice. I went and visited this manic farm. All tents, everything was provided by the UN. It was a fully UN operation. Operation. Why is this other limbo, the UN, not inquiring from their sister organizations without harassing Sri Lanka with this? What have you done with this? Now, this 40,000 people has to be amongst this 300,000 that, yes. that, that went, left this uh, one area. No? Now, after that, they were fully evacuated by the ICRC. Yeah. So, ICRC would have seen these dead bodies. Yes. <laughs> ICRC should have seen these dead bodies. Or even injured people. Mm -hmm. There were people who were suffering from various other ailments yeah. who were treated by the Indian doctors. The vast, I saw this, I personally saw the vast number of those persons were pregnant women. And I asked, how, what, how do you account for this? Is it to avoid conscription by the LTT, they had got pregnant. <laughs> so, so, LTT had a way, so, they, so it is, those people have been treated by the Indian doctors. So, this is some, the imaginary figure has mm. been brought about. 
Finally, one person says only seven thousand guests, seven thousand casualties in a war. That was bad. That is actually, I mean, not <laughs> good. One casualty is bad, but still, that is <laughs> that is compared to all these no, no, uh, Iraq when, wars. When, when there's an exchange of fire, certain number of people are bound to die. Yeah, they, that is that is what war that, means. That, that, that is when you, when you fire when the, the bullet hits some yeah. somebody, otherwise, otherwise you won't fire a bullet. No. So that shows a minimum level of casualties. Exactly. Absolute minimum level of casualties that have, uh, that were uh, that were suffered in this situation. So without that, you have this exaggerated figure. They must get verification. That's why I say I insist that government of Sri Lanka should say get verification from these UN agencies before proceeding further, because these agencies were on the ground, on the ground, mm. and they monitored this whole process. Now they must. Uh, we should insist that if they are going to proceed further, first call for reports from these international agencies, because none of them have made any complaints. <laughs>